<laughs> that means she stole it. Uh, it's still, it's still. He's my shirt. That's my shirt. <laughs> All right. So, how do y'all feel about Biden? I feel with my hands like I always have. Oh my gosh, Jesus. Biden. Jesus. How do y'all feel about Biden? Biden. <laughs> Giving or you know requesting money to to send a hundred billion dollars to to Israel again a new one hey how many hundred billions do we got shit apparently not enough for reparations <laughs> how many? this man has sent a hundred billion at least three times a hundred billion and then Ukraine they did they get like four billion I think the Ukraine got like four a three three billion I believe. But but we okay. can't even get guys. Oh, they just fighting each other. <laughs> I was thinking they was fighting each other, but then I was like, okay, that's, that's two different wars. I got you, I got you. I'm like, he playing both sides. <laughs> Man, we got at least feed the homeless people. I said at least feed the homeless people. They can't forgive the students. That ain't got required no payment. It's just forget about it. Mm-hmm. I thought, hey. If they would, hey, I, I don't, th I don't even think I would trip so hard if they would have at least forgiven my dog on student loan debt. I still owe student loans. You gonna take our tax, our tax paying dollars? Oh, that's some bullshit. Right. <coughs> that is some bull. He, I, I, I'm okay. I know I ain't okay with that either. <laughs> I was about to say at this point I'm okay with Uncle Trump, but nah, I ain't okay with that either. I don't know. <laughs> we fucked either way. <laughs> he, he ain't gonna send the money out. Now he ain't gonna give it to you. <laughs> We can just well, go rob. We got it. <laughs> Hell nah. I just think this is, I don't know. I don't know. I, th I think since he's been in office, A, Kamala Harris has been MIA since they've been elected. I ain't even seen her. I don't know if she's passed. I'm not saying she didn't do nothing. I ain't seen her. So it's crazy how he used her as a ploy to get into office. Mm. And we ain't seen her ass since, since they walked up the road together. They <laughs> you watch the uh, Cat Williams stand up? Oh, yeah, yeah. The new one? Yeah. We said, she's like, she's scared of dogs. Uh, they German Shepherd done bit like 13 people up in there. She ain't going up in there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, man. So, so, how do you feel about our tax, hard earned tax payers dollars being sent to, uh, what, Palestine? Israel, I'm sorry. I think it's. I, I don't think it's a surprise. I think it's consistent with um, the United States' global endeavors being over its citizens. Um, yeah, I think this is a country that was doing global trade when we had slavery. Um, I just wonder. Well, how does this affect how you all look at? Your vote. You want to go first? I mean, I never looked at my vote as effective anyway. Why? There's some people who like live and die on the vote. I was just, I was just having a conversation with a young lady out there. She was like really, really hyped about voting, and she was saying that to um, to marry somebody, they have to vote like she votes. Like, she's that deep into the vote. So why do you think your vote doesn't mean anything? Because of the electoral college. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. One, they nothing. pick. Two, neither side is for black people. So, I mean, ain't nobody looking out for me. Mm -hmm. uh, Unless they, until they want to use you to get in office. And then they MIA, Democrats. I'm, I was waiting on you to finish. That's it. That's it. <laughs> You said the Electoral College. What does that mean? I mean, I don't, I don't know how to elaborate properly. But, I mean, the Electoral College in the, what, I guess the, the popular vote, based on how they have the, the election set up, our votes technically, it don't really matter. It's really a popularity contest at a certain extent. Like, in certain states, it's basically a popularity contest. So, I believe if that's already, like, a red state or a blue state, for the most part, all you got to do is you, you might have to show your face. That's still going to be a red state or a blue face. I'm blue state. So it's very rare yeah. that states flip outside of 
Atlanta in this la this last presidential election. Atlanta's not a state. And Atlanta flipped Georgia, I believe. Oh. If I'm not mistaken, the it was it the last Atlanta flipped all of Georgia? Shit, you know how many black folks in Atlanta? Just that little boy. You know how many rural <laughs> white folks is in, in Georgia? Hey, and I, I know that they uh they had some women who went out there to to Atlanta to like help flip the vote mm -hmm. out there during the last election. So I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but if I'm not mistaken, I believe Atlanta helped flip Georgia to a blue state, or it was something like that. But um, as far as the election, as far as the presidential election, as an adult, this would be my first time not voting, because I feel like either way we're fucked. Nobody wants to see Biden versus Trump again. We saw what both parties has already done for us, which is basically nothing. Um, and at this point, I mean, I'm over it. And I think a lot of the young people we're over it as well. So a lot, a lot of people are not talking about voting. They don't care about the presidential election. Man, pick a side, man. I don't have one. They neither you one. Pick a side and you die in the middle. That's what happened. It's me in the middle, bro. So <laughs> it's me you, in the middle. So neither side is for are, us. Are, like none of them. They don't give a fuck about us. Well, when, when, when has there? Uh, have you seen an election that you thought one side was for? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I thought. Obama was for us, but I mean, honestly, but this is when I was much younger. So, you know, when you become of age, you think, hey, this side is for you until you realize, bro, I still got student loans. I'm still out here struggling. Y'all ain't changing the laws that help me. Like, uh, shit. Like I said, this is the first time I'm just like, I, at this point, I don't give a shit. Fuck it. Because ain't nobody going to win but rich white people. So it is what it is. Has has there ever been an administration that that's not who won? If they have not, I'm not aware of it. So I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So I'm saying, what's the difference? Shit, I don't know. I, you done I, I voted don't... every year up until now. Why not keep, keep the train on? Shit, well, for that's, what? That's... My, my one little vote don't matter. <laughs> what? All votes matter. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, they tell you they tell you last to get you in that long ass line. About it. Shit, hell no, nah, man. I don't know. It's just it's it's point to me it's pointless. So are you saying that you foresee a large abstention in voting this election? Um, from from people my age, my in within my age range, I think we're losing interest. For sure. And maybe maybe people younger, I don't even think y'all, they have the interest of people younger than me, to be completely honest. Like, I, what, Gen, Gen Z, Gen X, whatever? I think it's Gen Z. They damn sure don't give a damn. I promise you, they don't give a shit. So we the ones, we I guess we, we almost bought the creep up into elder, elderhood. Mm -hmm. I, ain't, I don't hear nobody talking about voting. Because it's like, bro, we, we done already been through what both, so we've seen what both of y'all can do. Some of the president presidents that I would be interested in, they're not even up. They're not, they're not an option. Who would you be interested? In? I've heard. Um, I, I believe his name is Andrew Young. I, I like some of his ideas. Um, Andrew Young from the civil rights movement. Andrew Andrew Young? Young? No, it's, it's some. I think he's like an Asian guy. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, oh, don't make me look. I'm, yeah, I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. He done heard the clap of thunder many a year. He was with the Carter administration. He was with Dr. King. No, well, he, he's he's an Asian guy, and, and y'all know I'm bad at names, so I hope I have his name right. I like some of his ideas. Um, I like a couple of Elizabeth Warren ideas. She had great ideas as far as the financial side Andrew of Yang. everything. Andrew Yang, that's his name. I'm sorry, Andrew Yang. You know I'm bad at names. I believe Elizabeth Warren had great ideas. Bernie Sanders had great ideas. Who is Elizabeth Warren and what were her great ideas? She has she had ideas as far as like student loans. Now this was before we had to go through the the, the Biden and um, Trump thing. They was interviewing on Breakfast Club and I really liked some of her ideas as far as like how to get us out of student debt, how do we move forward as a country, how do we help how, how Americans? Do get, how do we get out of student debt? I don't know, ask her. I'm just telling you what I liked at the time. I was just saying, what was it that you liked? She she had she had a plan. She she listed out the plan. 
on Breakfast Club, and I was like, okay, cool. And I never had heard of her before, mm-hmm. but her but her ideas made her stick out. Black lady, white lady. Uh, she's actually a white lady. Okay. Um, and also, what else? That, those three was about it. That's that's about it. Why is student loan debt so important? Uh, because that's something that uh, you know that affects most of us. You know, in our generation, our, a lot of our parents told us to go to school. Um, you know, because that's the best that they could tell us to do. So a lot of us went to school, got into debt to obtain jobs because, you know, it was a it was a country that was moving forward. So we we figured we had to have, you know, equal education with other uh, races. So I don't know. Still, for me, student loan is important because I want it gone and I don't want to pay it back. So you feel that we should have. Um, what's that called? Free education? Yeah, yeah, for lack of a better term. I was trying to think of something else, but... Of course, um, if they got a hundred bill to send it, uh, goddamn hell yeah. It should be free for everybody. I feel like maybe like you could set up something like if you graduate, we will, you know, clear, we'll clear that out. But if you don't graduate, then you got to pay us back. That'd be what fair. If, That'd be fair. Well, what if you don't graduate because your mom dies, or you don't graduate because you get a major illness, or you have kids and you gotta stop to take care of them? Or I give you the first two. The kids, that's your fault. Yeah, <laughs> that's your fault. Ain't nobody tell you do that. Okay. What if what if you're in school and your spouse dies? I what mean, there's gotta be some kind of arrangement for that oh, maybe, I mean, maybe a grace period like like how they give us now yeah. like um i guess you, you can defer years. yeah you can defer your stuff but at some point you got to go back you know what i'm saying to to finish and is that that would be technically be an incentive to actually finish so how how is okay already understood i'm not gonna play dumb the state universities used to be free when they were started mm-hmm. when they wouldn't let black people in how do we fund it now? Because that's what What's the saying, that's God, what God. the tuition and stuff. That's what a lot of people are going to be clamoring <laughs> about is um, because okay, how is it going to be funded? If they print print money, money, million, they got some money. Yeah, <laughs> man, shit. If they got their print money and they sending all of our money to another country for for their damn war, why you can't fund our homeless? Why you can't fund our education? Like, how do we move fo- move forward as a collective? So one of the main things that I remember at your graduation the other day, Joel and I, we was like, yo, it is it is a lot of Indian students here. I was completely surprised up north because, you know, here we're accustomed to it. There, I was completely surprised. So it's like, you know, we're we, we not taking advantage of the opportunities that we have here probably because, we, you know, most of us can't afford it. What do you mean we can't afford it? I mean, everybody everybody does not have the same type of opportunities. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you see other races coming down here, going to school, stuff like that. Um, our government is not doing anything to help us, so we just... I mean, we got more opportunities here than they do. Than, than they do here? Yeah. Mm. yeah. They can't work off campus. Mm. You know what I mean? And scholarships and stuff around here. They can't play football and get a full ride. They can't. I mean, they could. If they was good. Can they? They got football they could, they, they could. They recruit they nobody. Good. I know Dion ain't recruiting nobody <laughs> over there. Hey, if they was good. <laughs> they they sent his scouts over there. there. Hey, if they was good. They so. got money. <laughs> nah, we, I ain't going to say that. <laughs> So, if a majorly low voting turnout happens, does that affect politics? I don't even know if they would care. I think it would affect them. At this point, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I mean, I don't know how. I'm just guessing. (laughs) But I would feel like somebody's going to be able to influence. One group might be able to influence 
kind of what's happening just because they have more people show up. You know what I mean? To, to well, I'm saying if, let's say, right now it's looking like you seeing all kind of polls and you really don't understand what anybody is talking about. You know, everybody's, oh, this poll says this. Oh, they're saying 30, 30% of black people are going to vote for Trump. And, and all of these young people are disenfranchised. They're not going to vote at all. Well, let's say black folk didn't vote. Young folk didn't vote. And for people who believe in the voting system, they now feel they have to do something to get this significant number of people that's not voting, which is very similar to how Obama won. Instead of fighting for the existing voters, he activated people who generally don't vote. If a significant portion, 30% of well, it's already over 30%. Let's say if 50% of the population doesn't vote. Are politicians going to begin trying to have to actually earn the votes of minorities and women and young people? Or are they just going to fight over the small pie of people that's voting? I think I think um, like maybe maybe if they just change the system because now at this point I think politicians are politicians they are going to tell us uh, they are going to tell us what we want to hear to get in those positions and then once they get in those positions it's like Kamala Harris we we ain't fucking seen you since you you was elected not to say that she she haven't been doing nothing now I may not be aware of what she has done but. We haven't seen you. You're That's not a, a bad accountability of one of the most public jobs in the country. We, ain't seen, you. we, we have ain't seen or heard from you. They be doing that here. Be like, hey, we're all. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, hey, she yeah. went to lunch and she ain't yeah, came back. You can't get away with that in McDonald's. <laughs> you got to be on fraud. Hey, hey man. black people look stereotypical. <laughs> <laughs> But I, th I think if they change the system where if they if they come in some type of way and they have to show us like, hey, look, FYI, I didn't got rid of them student loans. Little brother, little brother in the White House. OK, we might be able to do something with you. you didn't, what else you got planned? Other than that, you get a trial period. You, buy the you, get about, you get about six months. Let you not do what you said within six months. Get the fuck out. But Biden canceled some loans. It wasn't me, so he didn't get my fucking vote. <laughs> oh man! Fuck him. I don't, okay, until what is the vote, point? What until is the my point? student loans is gone. What is the point of canceling some student loans? And that, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's, like when Abraham, <laughs> that's like when Abraham Lincoln let go some other slave. <laughs> What about the border states? Yes, <laughs> millions of slaves still in bondage. You let some of them go. What yeah. part of the game is that? Um, and what they call loan forgiveness, they let go the back end of your loan. Like, oh, if you make 50 payments, then we'll forget the rest. But you can't say, oh, 50 payments will be this much here. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. You got to pay it out, which means interest, blah, 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 blah. And then they forgive the rest. If I am working in a field, because the reason why you're allegedly doing this is because I work for a municipality or I work for a, gov a government funded entity like a university or I am a teacher, or I am a police officer, I'm doing public service. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm getting the loan forgiven, but it's not really being forgiven because I gotta pay this out. If I'm doing service today and have been doing service, like I've been, work I have been working for either a municipality or a university for 30 years, I should have my loan. Mm -hmm. But it's, no, 
starting from today to no service is service. If I had been doing service this amount of time and I could prove it, which they can prove it because all they got to do is just pull my taxes. Mm -hmm. Hate to jump off. Why do we have to do our taxes every year? Shit, why don't they teach us? I think they do. I think they do. They take them my money. <laughs> well, no, think I about it. If you that. don't do your taxes, or if you don't do your taxes right, they do your taxes and tell you how much you owe. So, so y'all know technically there's a law that has never been passed. It's this lady, she's a black lady. She used to work for the IRS. Techn by, technically, which they not gonna tell us this part. You don't have to. You don't have to do your taxes. There's no law saying that you have to do your taxes. So it's like the U.S. bully us into saying, hey, you have to do your taxes or we're going to do X, Y, and Z. But if y'all look it up, I don't don't make me find the black lady uh, name. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to look it up. I ain't going to try it. <laughs> I'm no, going to no, 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 let you go first on that one. I'm, go, go ahead. I'm, yeah. I'm just saying. It was the a lady. I watched, mind, I watched the YouTube video. I never tried it because I was like, look. But this is how they this is how they rule off of intimidation. Because what we don't know, we we gonna all buy into the same system. Okay, I don't I don't understand that because, um, I know if you don't make a certain amount, you can go to jail. You don't have to pay taxes. But if you fail to file or fail to pay. They can and will garnish your check. They can and will take your property. So I don't see how... Yeah, failing to file a return can land you in jail for one year for each year you didn't file the so due, she, by the due date. So ex-IRS agent tells it part two. Let me see what her name is. Fudge. Take your stuff to see your assets. $36 million an hour in interest from the American Sherry people. Jackson? My children, my two children, were born $86,000 in debt based on the national debt. And why am I going to take away from those children to give to somebody that is going to be born in 2030? It's not gonna happen. Okay, so well, we we doing more theory. research than we talking, so we got to talk. <laughs> oh, well. I'm just I'm just saying. The lady name is Sherry Jackson. And she used to work for the IRS, and then basically the IRS like went after her for telling the truth. But is a it's specific. She she named the law. Next time I'm gonna have a name of the law. But she named the law. She was like, there technically, this is not a law. We don't have to file taxes. They just intimidate and bully us into thinking that we do. So. I'm just telling I'm giving you the information. It says you can go to jail. Whatever. I'm tell I looked the law up. I was like, is 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 But you said the law This was, was years. Time. This was years ago when I looked it up. But no, I'm I'm saying she's stating that there is there's officially no law in, in the book that states that you have to file taxes. But I could I could be wrong. I'm, I'm gonna let going you go time. first because I ain't gonna try that. <laughs> Um. Yeah, this is tax evasion, right? We have a full tax code that is enforced by Congress. I don't. I. I don't understand. How, I mean, we have a articulated tax code. Yeah. How could? I'm only. She's. The she, law is tax evasion. Tax evasion is illegal intent of non-payment or underpayment of taxes due. Hey, I'm those only, who engage are subject to criminal prosecution penalties and jail time. Hey, I'm only going to this. Ex, she probably got fired for a reason. Ex IRS. <laughs> ex IRS. Like, hey, man. hey man, you ain't even got to do all that. <laughs> oh, you good? But ne ne next time I'm, I'm gonna watch her video just to just to make sure to like actually see what she said. Um, if we're going to assume that we do have to pay taxes, if we, if there is a, <clears throat> if there, there has to be a law. I mean, it's, 
the tax code says you have to pay it and you got to pay for your earnings every year unless you make under a certain amount of money. So unless she's saying the tax code doesn't, isn't real, I, I don't understand that. But let's say, um, let's say it is. Let's say the tax code is real and you do have to pay. Why do we have to file? Because if you do it wrong, they tell you what the correct amount is. If I say, oh, I don't owe y'all no money. They be like, yes, you do. We did your taxes. This is how much you owe us. If you're going to do my taxes anyway, why am I doing my taxes? Either send me my check at the end of the year, because you already done calculated it, or send me my bill at the end of the year, because you already calculated it. Don't you? Is it not for the write-offs and stuff that they didn't think you would? Yeah, they don't know. All your they write -offs? wrote the code. They know what they know what write-offs I can possibly have. Well, but like, if I, I buy okay. something in cash or something, okay, I, like I, I get you. I get you. You're saying like for the itemized deductions, yeah. they wouldn't know. But okay, I those could, are saving my life. I could I could go with that. <laughs> It's just a way that they can but cover their own. Don't not most people just do a 1040 easy? Yeah. Most people are like, this is how much I made. I'm taking the general withholdings. I either pay or I get. Yeah, it it's, should be. If you don't have a business or any write-offs, then here's your information. Like, here you go. Right. If, if you do, then you can fill this out. And again. Your write-offs is just going to be either money back or money. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's going to be little bit more money out towards you right so why is it not taught in junior high why is it not taught in high school why is it not taught in college something that we have to do every year as an American don't you find that out especially a state funded school that means the federal government in the state government, because some, some states like Indiana, you have to do state taxes and federal taxes. In Texas, you just got to do state taxes. Don't you find that odd? Shit, at this, at this point of my American experience, no. I don't find it odd. Because they're not, they're not going to teach you stuff like that at all. So it took me sitting down and figuring out how to do my own taxes. But you're required to do it. I, I get what you're saying, but they're not gonna teach us how to do those things because they want us to fund other people's business. If I don't, if you don't know how to do it, you gotta go. To, you gotta go to H and R Block. You gotta go to all these different places. Okay, even with the, even with that, even with that. Number one, we're funding somebody else's business because the masses of the people work for very few people, so we're already making them rich. But the things that you need. I've never had a class on how to vote. D, they don't prepare us for, for, for like real life things. They teach us stuff that a lot of the times we don't need in school. I can't tell you majority of the things that I learned in school is not, is, is, it doesn't translate to real life outside of- How are we not being educated to participate as American citizens. They don't want us educated. They want us workers. They don't want us thinkers. But they keep telling us to go vote, but they don't tell nobody how to do it. <laughs> yeah. they, 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 they make all kinds of, of voting laws and dates and changes and updates and all of that. And there is no part of our educational system that teaches us about it. They have all, they have a complex tax code. Would that not be, that's like. It, not even college though. You can't even take it. In no. College. And that's what I'm saying. Shouldn't taxes be like English? In high school, you got to have four years of English. Why would you not have four years of taxes? Because you can study the tax code for four years and still not know half of it. So I'm, I'm. 
I'm surprised at how little outrage is in mundane, everyday American society. Like, I think with, at least with taxes, people feel like, I mean, a lot of people feel like it's a win because they're getting money back. You know, they get $500, $1,000. They're like, oh, man, I get money back. When really, you, you want to break Yeah, you overcharged me. Yeah, you want to be yes. zero, but... That's the shakedown. It's the, it's the feeling of here's some money that people think is a good thing. So, you kind of robbing people. Now you bring me to another question. It's an indirect rob. What business can overcharge you every year and you keep doing business with them? Netflix. Because <laughs> they ain't even putting out some trash. And I'm still paying for that subscription. <laughs> nah, Disney Plus for sure. Disney Plus. So. <laughs> I'm, 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 I was just I was just pondering that. like, And that's not a huge racial issue or a huge political issue. That's a structural issue it's a societal issue. It's a, it. I don't know that 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 don't hit y'all the strange. System. No, it's it, it's strange, but it's not surprising. Like we're taught how to reason and think, but not how to do things that are required of us monthly. I don't think they, I don't think they teach us how to think either. Critical thinking is not. Well, teach you how to work. No yeah, they don't teach you how to think. Well, that's all. what math is. Uh, th that's what algebra is. How how do I work through this problem? And remember these steps. It's about being given steps to meet the same anticipated outcome. Because you're not going to use no matrices, and you probably. Unless you have a job in STEM, you're probably not going to be using algebra and fractions and all of that. It's just teaching you how to reason and think. Okay, here's a problem. How do I fix this problem? And if I mess in, if I mess up, I backtrack, find out where I messed up, and go back. Because, as you said, it's about preparing us to go work for somebody. But it's not how to perpetuate society, which is in the power, the power structure's favor too. Um, if I know, I guess voter suppression has always been part of the country because remember Native Americans weren't, weren't allowed to vote. Women weren't allowed to vote. Blacks weren't allowed to vote. Um, a lot of cases, a lot of cases, Mexican people weren't allowed to vote. Asians weren't allowed to vote. Poor white men weren't allowed to vote. So voter suppression is as much part of the country as the country. So maybe that's the logic in not teaching voting. Is it? I think we're not taught how to do taxes is because if we don't know the advantages to to us in the tax code, we'll always undersell ourselves. And they'll get more money from us than the tax code would generally allow. But I just want to interject that. I don't know why that just kind of hit my head, but. I got a question. How did you learn how to do your taxes? How did I learn? Um, one year, it was just, I, I was like super young. So it had to be, I've always worked since like 16. Um, and I would usually let my mom take care of it. But I think once I turned right about 17, 18, I went out, told my mom, don't carry me. Like, let me, let me take this journey. I went out, found a lady to do it. So I think the first year she did it for me. So I might've been 17 that first year. Second year, went back to her. She told me I'm not going to do it. I want you to learn how to do it. And that, that like shocked me. I'm like, man, if you don't file my taxes, whatever, whatever. She said, no. She was like, 
Go go down a little TurboTax. It's going to walk you through. So shout out to her. Forgot her name. She was a young black lady in, in Baton Rouge. She like looked out. She said, no, this is what you do. Go download this app and you can put it in yourself. So it took me sending my taxes in the first first year. I'm pretty sure I messed up. I ain't had no guidance. I just was like, went, went down a little TurboTax and just kind of followed all the steps. Then after that, I kind of got better and better and better, especially once I uh, started my business and then um, actually purchased houses. I realized the advantage that I had as far as writing off everything as far as like the taxes and anything like landscaping stuff like that so i just it was trial and error i just had to figure it out how do you learn how to do yours in the same way basically <laughs> i so, download turbo tax start filling it out someone told me to pay for the extra thing that i didn't want to pay for because that's where you get all the breaks and now i'm looking what i do now is i look at write-offs and stuff that I didn't have, and I started taking notes of them. So whenever you know I travel or whatever, I know okay, this is right off. Make sure I make sure I say this procedure, write this down, and whatever. So, yeah. but I'm never confident about you know what I'm filing, and I do get money back. So that means I'm still overpaying, regardless. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. it was uh, we were chiseling one to stone. <laughs> no, back then you went to the post office <laughs> to file your taxes. No, to get your tax forms. And on the tax form, it says, "Look at your W two, and the number. Put the number in box three D yeah, yeah, yeah. here." And all of the instructions were actually on the form. And, you know, if you worked at McDonald's, yeah, 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 there wasn't no itemization in the hood. You know nothing about that. You're trying to write off your lunch? Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, you hoped you got a little something back. And that was just, you know, I, I did my own taxes. God, I think up until the time I got married. And... Once I got married, um, I just started doing things a little more professional, you know, keeping records, things like that. And then that's when I started with H&R Block. And then when we opened the businesses, then it was like, okay, I don't know how to do this now, but I keep my receipts. Boy, I, have my rece I be receipt deep. And, um, but there needs to be uh, that's why I, I kind of get disappointed when I look at the internet and I see so many videos about nothing. And, 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 and uh, like the guy Country Wayne, I have, I'm sure I've never watched a full Country Wayne video. And it's not that I disrespect it, brother. It's just, this is not where I am in life. I'm old. I think he's like young people want to see that. But why is someone not making $200 million on YouTube by teaching people how to do their taxes? Where are we going with our intellectual time? They they do have a couple a couple people who, who do that. Like you see a lot of people watch Dave Ramsey, Anthony O'Neill. Um, I, I forgot the other guy name, but these are some videos that I'll, that I'll watch because they'll talk about financial stuff. I'm not talking about financial stuff. I'm talking about taxes. The, 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 your That's financial uh, complexity will vary from person to person to person. Your taxes will be very much grouped because most of us work one job. And have the general deductions and get up. What I'm saying is not necessarily the content makers, but why aren't Americans clamoring for this information? You should have $200 million April alone. It's how many people. 
in the United States? I'm, almost a billion? billion? I think 800 billion? That's crazy. Everybody got 350 million. But that might be an old number. That's crazy. That might be an old number. Bro, just imagine that honey. They could have gave a play a milli, Joe, a milli. They Population would. of the United States. 333 million. It's close. 333 million. And they gave a, 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 a hundred. I'm still on the hundred bill. That could have solved every issue. The, what? We only got 300 bill. That's it? Oh, bro, that's some bullshit. That's one conflict in one place. Like you said, where are the other strategic allies around the world that the United States is sending yeah, it takes 11, billions of dollars to? 11 billion to 30 billion to end homelessness. 11 billion to 30 billion a year to end homelessness in America. If we had 100 to send in one shot. That's 10 years of homelessness gone. I, but again, as I, opposed to people asking, why aren't we stopping it? Why aren't we asking, why is poverty here? Because they want us to be impoverished. Like, like why? They, I don't, yeah, that's the question. Well, why? That's the question. I don't, why? I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that, but, but we, all, we all know and Greed. understand that they yeah, want us to be impoverished. The Greed. Greed. Green. That's that's you know it, it's it there is no loyalty. The, the United States is supposed to be yeah. in theory. It's a business, a democracy, it's a right? Business. But in that, in the democracy is majority rules. majority rules. Capitalism is the financial system, and capitalism is the best survive out for self. How can you have a system where majority rules with a financial structure of individualist thinking? Those, those, the two don't. Yeah. They don't flow. And the truth is capitalism is our government and our economic structure. The United States government is nothing more than a corporation to pay for the things rich people don't want to pay for. I don't want to pay for the roads for you to get back and forth to my job. So we're going to make a middle class the Homestead Act <laughs> for you to build middle wealth and you pay the taxes we used to pay. I'm not going to train you on my job so you pay for your own training. That's called public school. I'm not going to buy you a car so you pay for public transportation. I'm not going to train my management so you pay to go to college. That's what, that's what that whole Western expansion was. That was the need to, that's why they fought, that's why the North fought against the South not to expand slavery and to expand white wealth. That's what that's what that was about. So it is a very strong argument to say capitalism is our government as well as our financial system because can you if, if you're going to have majority rule, why should black people vote? With 12% of the population. White. It would always go in favor of white right. people. Right. Which is what it does. So, 
And if the power structure is white, even if the blacks and Latinos, Latinx, get together and the Native Americans and put all their votes together, you're in charge of the laws. Why do we still have the Electoral College was put into place because of slavery? Why do we still have the Electoral College Almost 150 years later. Slaves still there. They just moved the slavery around, but it's still there. But if we're functioning under the fallacy that the 13th Amendment ended slavery in 1865, 1965 is 100 years. So 75, 85, 95, 05, 15, almost 25. So almost 160 years later, we have not had slavery. If we're going to believe that fallacy, why do we still have the Electoral College? Most people don't even know that the Electoral College was specifically put there because of slavery. Why? Well, I mean, just, just to change laws like that, I think a lot of people uh, put it on the president, like, hey, you're supposed to do this, but I don't, I don't know if a lot of people know that it's actually Congress. The president is nothing but a puppet. So it's not really much that the president could do because they have to run things through Congress and they batten everything back that, that doesn't fit what they want. Why do you say the Congress, I mean, that the president is a puppet? Because they, they don't technically control much of nothing. If if I have to if I'm the president and and you get you're the face. Mm -hmm. They they put you as the face. So mm -hmm. they utilize you as hey, you control everything. Mm -hmm. When all actuality, everybody got a boss, i.e. Congress. So when they go when they go and, and try to pass bills or whatever the case, something something that that can actually change and help us, like the student loans, Congress was the one that said no. So are you saying that we don't have three equal branches of government for checks and balances? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm, I'm not. I'm saying when, when, the, when the president goes to Congress with ideas, whether we like them or not, whatever, if they don't, they're going to say no. And it depends on who, who, hold those seat, who hold those seats. Okay. So if it's mainly Republicans, it's going to always go to Republican right, regardless mm -hmm. if we have a Democratic um, president in office. Mm -hmm. But if they're mostly Democrat, then, of course, it's going to always go the Democratic way. So it's like nobody is really fighting for the people. Mm -hmm. Everybody's fighting for themselves. Why do you think the people have such a vested interest in this dual party system when most people are not benefit by it? Because most people in this country are working class, if not working poor. And this includes poor whites. Because I, I just finished this book, um, The Sum of Us. And it's, it really goes into that. Why do you think so many people who are not directly benefiting from the American system, don't know the tax code, are caught in um, student loan debt, like you're saying, looking for jobs to make other people rich, why are they buying into this dual party system so passionately when it I mean, I, I feel like it's kind of like you start you start them young they learn it in school this is how things have always been so they just get so used to it like this is how things are supposed to be they don't realize that things can change or should be different or whatever but I think I'm, it starts I'm not, at I'm a not young age. I'm not necessarily seeing the structure per se. I'm saying, you know how some people are, like the people who stormed the Capitol. <laughs> they are like, I'm a Republican. 
And you got some, like I was talking to a lady man. today, and yeah. she said that Donald Trump is I forgot her words, but it was very visceral. It was he's a horrible human being. And I'm like, I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess. You've never talked to him. You know, I'm like, like people take that when they're talking about the Democrats or the Republicans, whatever side they're on, they're like, we do this. We. I'm like, you're broke as me. <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? Oh, we need a smaller government. You work at Home Depot. The size of the government will not affect you <laughs> one side or another. But I mean, folks, your job is digging a ditch, literally. And you're talking about we need less government. What? No matter what the size of your government is, you're going to have a job with a name on your shirt. What are you talking about? I, I, I'm... I'm just amazed at that. Like, it's almost like when I hear people, uh, when 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 the when the NFL protests were going on, it made no sense to me why where white billionaires were saying we don't care about black lives, we just make money off of them, and double down on it. They stood on business. And I respect that. I prefer racist, blatantly racist people than hypocrites. Because I know how to work with you. I immediately stopped watching. I have not watched the NFL since 2016. I don't buy anything NFL related. But black folk was still supporting the NFL talking about that's my team you gotta pay to see your team you gotta buy a jersey for your team that's not your team and you can't sell nothing with your team on can't it can't sell you nothing buy. with your team <laughs> on it they gonna and come just, but that, to me, that's just as crazy as this. I mean, people become violent. If you say I'm a Republican and I say I'm a Democrat. I think that's more the person. That's the personality of the person. Someone who's going to get bucked for the Republicans is someone who's going to get bucked for the, you know, for the Cowboys. Or, you know, it's just, that's the type of person they are. So when they pick a group that they can relate to they go all out for it and it's like they have nothing else to be a part of in their life to make them feel how how can you like that. how do you relate to Mitt Romney who said oh well when you're going to start off in life just borrow twenty thousand dollars from your parents and start a business who it functions in a mindset that everybody parents Got twenty thousand alone. That means that you. That means that you got more than that. He. How, how do I see myself with him? I so over there by the Grand Prairie Mall, the outlet mall. They used to always have this big Trump group out there every weekend, and I so wanted to stop. And I just never took the time. Because how do you align your thinking, your pocketbook, your in with a billionaire? And you not even a hundred there. <laughs> the only way y'all there is no, you not all even a hundred there. Yeah. Not even a thousand there. You can't get it a hundred. That's what I'm saying. If you live in check to check, you're not even a hundred there. You ain't got hundreds in the bank. <laughs> and that's what I, but but I am uh, I am aligned. How how can you be aligned in thought 
with a man who started off with four hundred million dollars? I think it's really more of a target thing. Like, if you give what was the like, you give everybody a common enemy, then they have someone to blame, point at, da da da. Then they can say, "I'm in this group," but it's really not about being in this group. It's about being against the other group, and I need someone to be mad at, so I'm gonna be mad at this group because my life sucks or whatever. But why do this is something that has? I don't think it's gonna make sense to anybody who thinks logically. That's why, like, but (laughs) this is what I'm saying. This is supposed to be the most productive and greatest country in the world. Now, I, I will kind of entertain that story because of how many people, like you said about the graduation, how many people are coming to this country for opportunity. You can look at the universities, you can look at the medical field, you can look at engineering, People are coming here and happy to be here. Talk to some of these international students. They are, they're leaving their families. It's women that come from the Philippines that leave their husband and their kids there. And they come here and work and send their money back to the Philippines. I'm going to be a mom, leave my kids and my husband and get here to hustle so I can send money back. So, this is I don't imagine that this is a country full of the most stupid people in the world. I just think I think the most I ain't gonna say the most stupid, but not the very not the very brightest people lead us. Then how are we so productive? Hell I, Is it the is it the system that is working? I think because I think because a lot of us, I mean, only thing that a lot of people has done was set up like jobs. But a lot of us choose to go to work. A lot of us choose to do X, Y and Z to make the country keep running. So a a lot of even when I'm at a job, some of the smartest people we at the bottom. And I'm like, I be looking up like, man, y'all ain't got it all. You know, common sense ain't so common. So I don't think the smartest people are running the country at all. I think the richest people are. The people I mean, have access. I, don't you think that's insulting to the, the smartest people if the smartest people can't even get in charge? How is that insulting? That ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm telling if you smart, I just don't typically you ain't up there. That shit is about wealth and access. It's, it's, and it's popularity. Who you, and who you, it's who yeah, you know. Yeah, I feel like it's more think, about who you know. Thinking about some of the smart, some of the smartest people are not the most popular people. And if you really look back at high school and like very unpopular people, <laughs> the, 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 the most popular people were not always the sharpest tools in the shed. Very seldom did you find somebody who was extremely popular and extremely scholarly. That rarely was that. So the people who make the deals are the people with the personality. Uh, Kevin Samuel used to say that. They, they charismatic. But that don't make, to me, that don't make them smart. They, but, but they that, hire the smart people. To run the business. Right, because you can't. So you can't, smart. Yeah, yeah, so who's really smart in that situation? Yeah, your intelligence <laughs> doesn't attract people. That's in, in law school. They said uh, the people who made A's became judges. The people who made B's worked for the people who made C's. It, that was, that I'm, was the I'm same. I'm glad I got the C's there. <laughs> Thank God. I knew that shit was going to be in the long run. They told me C's get degrees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. C's to get degrees. <laughs> but now, nah. so I have a quick question for y'all. Why do y'all think um, a lot of Hispanics or Mexican Americans vote Republican or are starting to vote Republican, the ones who can vote? I think people historically want to be on the side of the strong. Um, I think Mexicans in particular have gotten so much 
immigration heat that they're going, they're having their turn with integration. Because for uh, almost 200 years, black people have been trying to ingratiate themselves into white American culture. One thing that I found disappointing is that very, very few black people have fought for liberation or equality. They asked for a better seat at somebody else's table. We should start creating our own motherfucking table. That's what Garvey was saying. Garvey said, make your own table. To an extent, that's what Malcolm was going toward, which his parents were Garveyites. That was part of the Nation of Islam's um, at least communication because Elijah Muhammad was Elijah Poole, who was a Garveyite. A lot of people don't know that. But um, I understand why black people are fighting for a better seat because death usually was the result of liberation. But I think the Latinx movement toward Republicans is because that's where the most visceral response is and kind of like Dr. King and um, Frederick Douglass to a very large extent believe if I can prove to you that I'm not what you think I am, then your humanity will make you function different with me. And I think that optimism, which is a criticism I also have of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., that hyper-optimism by projecting humanity on inhumane people creates a dangerous outcome for the whole. The people who will dehumanize or commodify a person lacks humanity in themselves to be able to do that. A plan banking on my humanity is the worst plan in the world. I have none. And that's a very unpopular view in history. But Is there really any other realistic way to look at that scenario? Can I do what I would, what was happening to this group of people? I come genocide of Native Americans, um, chattel slavery of Africans, removal of Mexicans, oppression of Chinese. Oppression, second class citizenship of women, and that doesn't affect my humanity? I, I how, how is that possible? And for people to say, for us to compare ourselves to those people, non white groups, to compare ourselves to white groups. Is that the measuring stick that we want historically? I don't know. What you got to say, Joe? I mean, I don't know why they would vote that way, but um, I feel like that's kind of what their edge is, is to, if I'm, I'm willing to be inhumane, Everybody else wants to be humane, then that's going to give me an edge over everybody else. 
you know. <laughs> I mean, we in a room and nobody want to kill nobody, but I'm willing to kill somebody. Guess who ain't finna die? Me, <laughs> you know. Everybody else, is, <laughs> everybody else has a reason to be scared. I, when I first started my research, I said around 1500, the world had a contest of who was the worst people on the plate on the face of the earth. They started global slavery. Europeans, specifically the English, won. That was the they are the minor they're the numerical minority. But um, it's kind of like that movie, The Usual Suspects, where they were talking about Kaiser Soze. He said, you know, you don't need men, you don't need guns. You don't need influence. All you need is the will to do what the next person is not. And when Europeans took slavery to the next level, the decommodification of humans, they made them property. But they knew they were human because they was having sex with them and having kids with them. So even if they were ignorant enough to really believe it, they know, okay, when I have sex with this sheep, a baby doesn't produce. When I have sex with this person, a baby produces. Okay, so let's say if they were really that removed from reality, after 50 to 100 years, you go, oh, okay, we have the same ge genealogy. This is a person. And we've always had Martin Delaney's. We always had Nat Turner's. We always had Frederick Douglass's. We always had Sojourner Truth's. We always had Harriet Tubman's. All the way up to W.B. Du Bois, uh, Mark Lamont Hill, Kimberly Crenshaw. We've always had black excellence and black geniuses, no matter what our situation is. So it wasn't like there was not an example that went against the popular belief or opinion. So I, I just, I don't get how today black people, white people, and everybody who has a comment on the racial dynamics of this country don't connect that beginning to today's end. It's not the history is over here and the present is right here. It's a continuum. This is the beginning of what we're talking about now. Right there. So we're talking about the whole thing. It's not, oh, we'll leave that back here. No, it's the same thing. Mm. It's the trunk of the car. You driving the car, you driving the car. If you're going to analyze the car, you got to analyze the whole car. So I got a question and then I'm going to play a video and I want your response um, after this question. Do y'all still think that Asians, Chinese, and Indians are still oppressed? You would have to ask them. Hell no. Nah, they got that law changed in half a second. <laughs> we ain't got nothing. They changed that law. I mean, yeah. You mean in the United States, if they're oppressed? Yeah, like the the people who come here, the people who are here, do you still think that they fall under <laughs> oppression? Because like earlier you said, the oppression, <laughs> the, the, oppress, the oppression of, uh, I believe you said Chinese. Mm -hmm. So do you still think that Asians, Chinese, and Indians are oppressed being here? I think any immigrant falls under the immigration bias because poor whites have traditionally and historically reacted negatively to the ploy of pitting immigrants against their opportunity. That's uh, what uh, Dr. McGee calls the zero sum political dynamic means for you to get something, I have to lose something. Which is, in, even though it's worked, it's extremely illogical because 
if I own the business and I hire everybody, there's no way these people can take your job unless I hire them. But I'm telling you, these people come in. Is go, and you, no, if you and I are cool, your issue, instead of your issue being with me, your issue is with me, not them. Right. It's with me. You don't hire them. We good. How can they take your job? And over 96% of the CEOs in this country are white men. So why would poor whites have anything to fear if whites are hiring everybody, but the same whites that's hiring are telling the poor whites, hey, they're going to take our jobs. They can't take it. You can only give it to them. So a lot of these people are caught in this fight between poor whites and rich whites. And that goes all the way back to 1676 uh, with Bacon's Rebellion. But I think that's the, the same thing. You give them a common enemy or a common target to, you know, hey, it's them. You miss everything that's that's going by it, going past your head, you know? That's what Lyndon B. Johnson said. He said, if you give a white man somebody to look down on, he won't notice you picking his pocket. And if you give him enough people to look down on, he will empty his pockets for you. That was whites talking about whites. And that's the biggest dynamic. All right, so I'm going to play this video for y'all. You um, can't see the video on the video. I'm going to play it. All you got to do is listen. I'm a fan of yours, so I'm going to make a point of disagreeing with you so that it will be fun. Um, yeah. You are so bright and articulate, yeah, and I guess I can call you articulate since you're not an American black. Um, can't can't say that about them. That's that's derogatory. Um, and that was a great opening segment. Lots of things to talk about there. Oh, and I agreed with many many things you said during, in fact, probably more than than most other candidates um, when you were running for president. But I still would not have voted for you um, because you're an Indian. We'll get back to that. So, I don't understand why you played that. Well, what's your thoughts on that? Who was the who is is a lady named Ann Coulter, Vivek Ramaswamy? He was in the running for the presidential mm -hmm. election, so I'm pretty sure y'all heard of him. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he was doing an interview apparently mm -hmm. with Ann Coulter, and she felt the need to say that. So what you? All right, well. No, no, no. I'm saying, it, it, was that new to you? Do you think that most American white people don't feel that way? I mean, to, to on the news, be so blatant and disrespectful? Like, it's like, Did you look at the 60s? Did you not look at the NFL protests? Did you not look at so, so the George Floyd if you, if you counter protest? If you understand Mr. Vivek, Background as far as his, I guess you would say maybe his wanting to be close closer to whiteness. We don't. I don't necessarily understand why they cuddle to try to be close to a group that feels this way. But we know how they feel about us. And we have been trying to integrate to white people and measure ourselves against white agendas since time. What? How, how did Nat Turner get caught? One of the slaves told. How did how, the, we always have had? We have always had people in our community align themselves with the white power structure, either out of fear or out of opportunity. That is something that has been within our group. Why would we think it's not in other groups? So yes, he is an American born person of Indian descent. This country is built on racism and the ploy of ignoring it. Word slavery is not in the constitution. So so I'm thinking in which I can I can attest to how they feel, but I'm thinking that most other Racist doesn't necessarily feel as though that 
that maybe that maybe white people feel this way about them because they so busy trying to trying to join join a club. Hey, I want to be a part of this. I wanted this, and they align their their thoughts, agendas, everything. How is that different from Kamala Harris? You said how is that different? Has, how is he any different than Kamala Harris? Well, should I see him? What I'm saying is, Kamala Harris became her blackness became an issue when the white presidential candidate needed a black person. But she was using the American justice system to lock, to lock black up. folks up for who knows how long. Mm -hmm. And I haven't seen before with the, with the, I believe she has something to do with either the George Floyd um, police reform um, proposal or it was the Emmett Till anti-lynching act. It was one of the two that I believe she had some association with. But I haven't seen her as no Maxine Waters or Shirley Chisholm or I haven't seen her on the front lines as Sister Black a lot. And how did she get to be Sister Black a lot all of a sudden? And then no more after after the president and they, when they got the office. So she aligned herself with the white power structure just like he did. And I think it's more of a matter of what James Baldwin said was people who come, who come to this country know their social place by their proximity to the Negro, especially darker people. They are going to, and it's self-preservation. Who's going to get in the line of fire? Jane Elliott used to do something at her, at her speeches. She would say, everybody who thinks black people are treated fairly in this country, raise your hand. And she said, I don't think y'all heard me. Everybody who would like to be treated the same way black people are treated in this country, raise your hand. Nobody raised their hand. So if I come to a country and they smacking a particular group in the head, I'm going to make it clear I'm not part hey. of that group. Like, I, I'm, I'm a boy. I'm a man. I ain't going to be on the girl side because they be doing them dirty. So, <laughs> I'm going to make sure y'all know. <laughs> Identify. Identify as a man. That's what I'm saying. Can, can you really blame those people? And when they learn the game, they try to play the game. Now, the problem is once you go so deep into that game, it's hard to get back. You in the deep end. Candace, <laughs> Candace Owens. Whatever that guy's name is. Vivek Ramaswamy. Yeah. You said that wrong. Vivek, well, I, I probably did. <laughs> I just did. My, bad, my bad if I did. Yeah. But I, I thought that was interesting. I was like, A, it was disrespectful to, to him. Okay. I, I, I don't say, I, I don't. Now, mind you, I, I don't I don't agree with a lot of his points, but it was. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think that particular lady, mm -hmm. though I have never spoken to her, I respect her ignorance. I respect the fact that she doubles down on it. She wears her hood and her sheet. If she's convinced that she is or not, she says it. Fine. But there's a reason why that lady is doing well. I wonder what's her, what, how many people she got on X. I bet you it's over a million. That's who I'm worried about. It's only one blonde racist her. 
I'm worried about the million people that have elevated her platform. It's only one Donald Trump that's a rich, elitist, mean person. I'm worried about the 43 million people that voted for him. That is our country. That is the white populace. There is no denying that. Look at the storming of the Capitol. There wasn't a lot of brothers out there. I would dare say. I mean, Breonna was on her way. No. <laughs> I got caught kind of trapped. Mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. Well, that's, you know, I'm, I'm saying there's there something that we have to wall. really, really consider. Had a cramp. <laughs> I was not out there. <laughs> but, um, sure. What, what you got to say about it? I didn't know. Go ahead. No. I, I need you to ask me a question first. I, so, based on a video I, I just played, do you have anything to contribute? Oh, I mean, you know, they ain't fired, did they? So, they kept her no, around. Yeah, they, they, she you know, paid to say that. They, yeah, they kept her around. That's what they wanted. I oh, mean, that's not the worst thing she said. But you know what? She at least said it to him the, and, and again horrible people are horrible people but stand on it don't vote for 50 years everything against black people and then catch on to a black man's coattail to become vice president and then a black woman's coattail to become president that's a hypocrite that is sickening but those whites that where their hatred, they're historically um, represented. And what they exemplify is how many whites will go along with that. The vast majority of whites would not say that. The vast majority of whites may not even agree with that. But very few of them will speak up against it. Historically, is historically that's true. Very few of them, maybe 10% of them, will speak up and out against it because one thing about white supremacy is that door swing both ways. They will hurt the people that they dislike and hurt white people that speak up against it. Clint shot up a whole bunch of white houses too. Camp, they, they burn crosses in white yards too. So white supremacy swings both ways. So a lot of white people don't speak up and speak out against hate groups, against oppressive systems, against um, inequalities and, and inequities because they don't want to catch the smoke and that's the problem because if you got two white people that will hurt everybody and eight white people that's not going to do nothing about it you get ten bad white people And that's been the social dynamic as far as race in American history. Though the majority of them, you gonna stop slavery? Cool. You gonna stop um, segregation? Cool. You're not gonna stop it? Cool. You gonna keep slavery? Cool. Long as it's not on my porch. That's the problem. Because it's only a small number of really, really hateful people in the white power structure. The vast majority of the people are scared of them. Because you get some that will do it. You get another portion of them that want to do it but don't got the guts. 
The rest of them is scared of the rest of them. But then you also got that 10% over here that's your John Browns, your Jane Elliott, your Tim Wise, your Robin D'Angelo's of the world that's like, do what you gonna do. I want the smoke because right is right. And that's a very small percentage. Just like we have a very small percentage of mega editors, Dr. King, uh, Malcolm X, Fred Hampton, the guys who are saying, I will let my kids grow up fatherless for the cause. Now I'm down for the cause, but like now my kids are grown. I could probably take some different risks than I would, but I know my wife would not appreciate it. But when you got little kids, you got to be a special kind of brother. That's why we only got maybe 10% of us. Because is it more important than my wife and kids? Is it more important for my parents to look at their baby down? I don't know if we can do that. You know? So, um, I, I think that particular lady represents the worst of our society but it elevates how white how the majority of white Americans turn a blind eye to that the people who say it's not racism anymore how can you have that on national TV and it doesn't doesn't Create an uproar. Yeah, I ain't never even seen the video. Oh, well, that's not the worst she done said or done. That lady is horrid. That's why I was like, why aren't you showing this? Because my skin was crawling. Like, just absolutely not, not a good person. Um, so, who? Um. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't know about that one. But now, how do you navigate improving either your day to day life, the future, the black infrastructure? How do you all function within this system? to cause positive outcomes for yourself and other people being aware that that kind of media, big money media, there's a reason why that's big money media. You're up against that just as a regular person. How do you, how do you find your daily happiness and create opportunities to combat that type of reality. I don't got control over nobody but myself. So, uh, I mean, personally, stuff like that is 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 sad to hear. But I mean, at this point, with things that Black people go through every day, it's like at this point, it's just another, another, just another something else. Basically, well, how can you say you have no control over anybody but yourself, and your vocation is literally? Influencing people to make better decisions. That's what you, that's what you do professionally. You've been trained for that, and from what you've told me, you're very good at it. So how can you? I can't, in, I can't influence. I can't influence her to do better. I have the. We're, I not, have we're, the, we're not talking about her because again, we've we've identified she's to the core. The issue are the millions of people that supporting that. I'm not saying how do you change her or people who think like that. How do you combat that? How do you carve a place for yourself and others in society? Only thing well, I could do is just show up as my best self. So even as I'm influencing young people in the area that I'm in specifically, it's, it's not a whole bunch of us un unless they they sent to what they would deem is the, is the worst part. Then you see a whole bunch of us. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how how is that even possible in a in a red in a red area? It's like you you barely see us. Unless 
they they stripping them to to the worst part. Then you see nothing but black and Hispanics. So the only thing I can do is just show up in my, as my best self every single day, whether I'm dealing with somebody who's coming from parents like that, who's coming from uh, backgrounds like that, because you do have it. So at that point, the only thing I can do is just show you the best person that I can be. And hopefully you take good from it and you take that along with you throughout life. So you don't have this negative connotation of black black people. You you at least you got a, at least one um positive interaction for a lot of time because a lot of a lot of people that I have they own for a lot of time. So that's all I can do is just be good to you. I mean, I will. You have to start talking to people, questioning them, seeing what they think. Um, and then whenever they, you know, like say, you say she got a million followers, like I would be asking, why you follow this person? Okay, they said this, 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 this. Do you agree with these statements? Is this, you know, who you are? And then I would try to point out, you know, either their hypocrisies or their accuracies, you know. So, Is it worth trying? I think when you're a certain age group, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because a, a lot of that stuff is, is taught. Like, I remember when I was in college, and I was taking a, a race relations class. Went to my professor. My, my professor was like, I want you to speak more. I was never one to go back and forth. I'm in rural Louisiana. I'm like, bro, I, I don't even <laughs> care. I'm just here for a grade, partner. Like, y'all feel how y'all feel. I feel how I feel. There's no point in the conversation is how I felt. Mm -hmm. He said, hey, I want you to engage more. So I remember bringing up these things like, hey, racism is like this stuff is taught. Like, I don't I don't remember coming out being like, hey, I don't like you because you look like this. I don't ever remember that. So I'm like, this is taught. And it was crazy. The reaction that I got was from a black young lady being more offended. And I was like, baby, I wasn't talking to you. It's only like three of us in the class. Oh, that wasn't for you. <laughs> what the fuck? What, what that, offended her? Because because I said that statement. I was like, racism is taught. So be, because she, I don't know how she was raising her daughter. I never had a conversation with the lady. I was very quiet, like quiet in the corner. I'm just here for a grade, partner. And her response was down near her crying. Like, I, I don't teach that in my household. Well, that's letting me know that you do. Like, what you, what you mad for? I'm not saying that you doing it, but by by your reaction, it's making me it may, it's making me think Someone that you Someone told her that earlier today, and you done triggered it. So it in. Many I was Joe. When I tell you, I was genuinely. I was like, bro, it's three of us, and that sure was three of us in the class. The rest is white. I was completely. Someone confused. told her, "You teaching your kid how to be racist." And she's like, no, I'm not. And then she got to, then she got to class, <laughs> and he was in there like, hey, racism, top. <laughs> That's a fact. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I didn't know how how right I was until mm -hmm. I got older. <laughs> if you throw a brick in a pack of dogs, the one that barks is the one that got hit. <laughs> no, it's just oh, how about the now protest? Hit dog on holler. She hollered that day, Joe. No. I was surprised. I was like, mm -hmm. motherfucker. Mm -hmm. That was not for you at all. So after that, I was like, I'm done with the conversation. Don't ask me to talk no more. But, I'm good. But see, you begin to learn. Sometimes I'm thinking the problem is over here, mm -hmm. but the problem is somewhere else. I thought it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Because I would not think Black people teach. We don't even teach how to be racist in a good way. Like us first. Mm -hmm. Us elevating ourselves. Mm -hmm. Our race. That's racist. Mm -hmm. We don't even teach that. Let alone the bigotry to enforce us being first. Whereas 
whites historically have been educated in both. If you have been, if you've gone to high school in America, if it's in art, it's in culture, it's in the job market, it's in the economy, um, it's in media, it's in theater, not just the elevation of white, but the bigotry that is combined with it to enforce it. It's the bigotry that's the problem. It's what are you willing to do to be elevated? What are you willing to do to be first? One is willing to rape, pillage, lie, kill for centuries and ignore it. Oh, well, that was back then. Ain't nobody doing that now. Okay, well, you know, mass incarceration, like generations of black people were incarcerated for nonviolent crimes. And right now, there's an opioid crisis in the country is there's no, hey, here's your brain on drugs. We don't have that now. Now the opioid crisis is going on in the, uh, that other stuff that they're doing that if you touch it, you die. Oh, fudge. Oh, zip it. No, fool. No, <laughs> no zipping is a whole nother game for that nah, weight loss. Man, oh, but, um, that anthrax? other. Anthrax? Huh? Anthrax? No, no, no. no, no. It's, a, it's, it's a drug. It's a drug. Yeah. I can't think of Fentanyl? Right. Fentanyl. 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 Yeah. Y'all gotta get y'all drug game up. <laughs> that's, 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 what I'm, what I'm saying is that that's, that's, that's not in our area. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. And you're not seeing any tanks going into white communities. You're not seeing any riot gear going into white communities. You're not seeing uh, any rot, uh, 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 stings in the white community. Yeah. It's now being back to being treated as a health crisis. Right now, if you, if you hear somebody talk about Chirac, they talking about the black people killing each other. Numerically, there are more people dying from opioids in Chicago than killings. Why, why do you think, why is it not opioid Chicago, Chicago opioids? I mean, <laughs> what, where's the play on the white crisis? Same thing, totally different response. And people will say, and I, I was just having this conversation with some very young, some young people that's really close to me. And I was giving them the business at, because they are, you know, the, they're the, the early 20s. And they are very defensive of multiculturalism. Well, how do you know white people are bad? How do you know that this is what they meant? How do you know? You don't even know enough history to know who deserves the benefit of the doubt. If you learn the history of this country, perhaps your defense would be placed better. If this group has a history of doing X, why are we acting like we need to prove that that's what they do? You follow where the money is going. Anytime it's a crisis, where's the money going? It's a therapist. Therapist cleaning up right now, man. Well, I'm saying... They doing big. Well, I, I'm saying... The um, mass incarceration, the money was going to rich whites because they were opening up private prisons. The drugs coming into the country. We don't have border jobs. Forget the not having planes. Forget the not having boats. We ain't even got border jobs. How is that stuff getting, not only inside the country how does it get into the middle of the country how does it get in little rock arkansas how does it get into gary indiana how's it getting into chicago now okay texas i can see miami i can see california i can see 
How is it getting in Atlanta? Oklahoma. Yeah. Oklahoma, they got signs up like, please stop smoking meth. <laughs> like, please do not. Like, oh, and remember the meth crisis was before the opioid crisis. Why was there no... War on meth? Yeah, why was there no war on meth? Why is it two generations of white people were not locked up? Right. They didn't put billboards out saying, please don't smoke crack. You know what I mean? They just can't whoop your ass. <laughs> We gotta. We have to think about that. And then when we have these twenty-year-olds, especially black twenty-year-olds, that don't like at, the, at especially in the university setting, when they don't they don't have life experience. No more history. I'm trying to avoid saying something, so I'm not. I'm just not gonna say it at all. Um, when <laughs> there is a reason why people are programmed to, a lot of times when you have young black people in opulent areas, they become disassociated with the black experience and their conversation is aligned with the people in the opulent community as opposed to those that are not in the opulent community. And they take some of the judgments of that community toward this community. Well, they're lazy. They're criminals. Mm -hmm. They're drug users their and when and their criticism is direct here but it's really um it they filter their criticism up here and they filter any criticism going that way which makes them look further disassociated from this community because why is it as a black person because you've been in this opulent community, okay, I understand you don't uh, understand what's going on here, but you are protecting this community because you're a part of it or you want to be. It's... I, I, I think a lot of different races do that. I think it just hurts more when it's us. Oh, it's, it's, I, I, I believe that. And I think if you have an Indian person doing it to Indians that are treated like immigrants in the worst way, and then you have the gentleman that was on the video getting dismissed by that lady, I can see them going, bro, really? Kind of like how we look at Candace Owens. Really? We doing that? We doing like that now? Because they just was passing laws on blocking our travel in and out of the country, and they don't differentiate between this region and this region and this region of our country. They just say nobody from this area. So, um, but that's the game in America is assimilation. I don't know. Anything to add, Joe? Uh, nah, go ahead. I was gonna say something. Go ahead. Go ahead. Nah, I mean, go ahead. You got you got two minutes. Nah, we good. Wrap it up.